Hey guys, here we go into a film study on Murat Gassiev versus Denis Lebedev. Uh, a really interesting fight, um, and it's in preparation to see how Murat Gassiev is going to fight his upcoming southpaw opponent, uh, Oleksandr Usyk, who is an extreme talent. Um, and what we're looking for is to see kind of how the World Boxing Super Series is going to end. And the way that we're going to do this <clears throat> is by watching Murat Gassiev fight... Uh, see how he fights southpaw fighters, uh, as Dennis Lebedev is a southpaw, as well as uh, Oleksandr Usyk. Now, the things that we're going to be looking for are the way that they control the space between them and their opponent. Now, this is different. I know I say this in all my videos, but for those of you that are new, this is different than con maintaining space, right? If you're here and your opponent's here, you can't hit them and they can't hit you. That doesn't do anybody any good. What I'm looking at is how they control the space. When one fighter wants to move into that space to start setting up their offense, what does this person do? How does this person keep them out of it? Um, is it with head movement? Is it with fainting? Do they use a probing lead hand? Um, are they constantly taking angles? Do they have an active guard? Um, and all those things serve to not only slow their opponent's uh, offense down, but break down the layers of their offense so that they're more likely to commit and put themselves out of position to shots they haven't set up, which is a huge no-no in boxing. That's how you get knocked out. Um, then we're going to be looking at how they set their offense up, how they feint, how they probe, um, how uh, what opportunities they take advantage of against their opponent. And then we're going to look at how they defend themselves, um, how they if they move off the line after they throw a punch, if they... Uh, if they don't, you know, all the ways that they, they look to um, um, basically control their opponent. Um, and we're going to be looking at those with uh, Murat Gassiev uh, in preparation for the, the Oleksandr Usyk fight. So a nice friendly glove touch right there. And right now let's just watch Murat Gassiev. Uh, he's the one with his back to us right now. Uh, comes out. And shoots a jab, right? Now, this is really common, really interesting. Um, well, I can't really tell right here. But it doesn't look like he really steps with his jab right there. It looks like he's kind of walking forward. But what we're looking at right now is how square he is, right? He's really square at the moment. And he's got his high guard up, right? His, his hand on his chin um, or on his cheek. But he's not moving his head. You know, he's moving his lead hand a little bit, though, which is good. Right, giving his opponent feints, um, and then there's Lebedev catching that one. Now it's really interesting that Lebedev is so far over on his left leg. It kind of gives away the fact that he's looking to set up the left hand, and he's trying to walk Gassiev into it. As you can see, all his weight is on that back leg, and he's just kind of waiting for Gassiev to kind of come in, boom, so he can shift his weight and uh, catch him with the left hand. But let's watch how this develops. Now, one thing that you notice right away. <clears throat> um, Lebedev's not stepping with his jab. Now, this is going to be a little different. There's a little step right there, actually, a little step. But Usyk does step with his jab, and we'll talk about that when we do his fight against Myris Bradis, which, to be honest, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But um, Gassiev probing a little bit, right, controlling his opponent's lead hand. And this is very common when you have a southpaw versus a conventional fighter. This is very, very common. So let's not get too excited and be like, oh, he's doing great stuff uh, because everyone does this when they fight a southpaw. But uh, one thing I do want to point out is right here, <clears throat> he's going to stick his lead hand out there, control his hand, and then shoot that jab. This is very important. This is very important, and we'll see why um, in a minute. And I think we're going to do two rounds today. I'm going to kind of try to get to them, get through them kind of quick. <laughs> Controlling the lead hand, controlling the lead hand. There's a little bit of upper body movement. And then when Dennis Lebedev attacks, gives him a very basic attack, faint, faint, body shot. And Gassiev doesn't look to counter at all. This is going to be very important. Um, so we want to make a note of that, that he's not defending himself with punches. Interesting. So Gassiev throws a... Oops, excuse me. Um, he does the same combination, right? probe, and then start shooting another jab, and Dennis Lebedev tries to attack on the second one, right? Picking up on that pattern earlier of of, of um, Gassiev, and you'll see that pattern occur a few more times, and you'll see Gassiev kind of pay for it later, too. Probe, probe. Now, look at how um, Dennis Lebedev has control of the lead hand right here, right? They're touching gloves, touching gloves, and he knows that that 
lead hand is not any da- is not a danger to him, so he just catches it and touches it, right? And he's able to get out of the way of this left hand very easily. I think he actually catches it. No, he just moves out of the way. Um, he doesn't have to do anything to get away from that shot because he know he can see it coming because uh, Lebedev has control of Gassiev's lead hand. Gassiev hasn't stopped Lebedev from taking control or combating that lead hand dominance. Um, so Gassiev, although it looks like he's setting this shot up, he's really not because their, t- their gloves are touching. He knows that shot is no danger to him, and he only has to get away from the left hand. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that after he throws that shot, he does he stays on the line, right? He makes a slight step with his back leg to move um, counterclockwise toward Lebedev, right? But it's not very much. Boom, right? He's kind of just walking in with his shot. It's kind of like um, how Golovkin shoots his right hand. Um, he'll shoot that right hand, boom, and his, his back foot will come off the ground, and then he'll just reposition it after. But he's not really stepping with it. He's not really moving off the line. And this is going to be very important when he fights Oleksandr Usyk because Usyk is a very, very talented fighter. He he doesn't give his opponents a lot of opportunities. Um, and when we do film study on, on Usyk, we're really going to be looking for opportunities for Usyk to counter um, where Myrus Bredis might stay on the line and he might be able to catch him. Whoops. <laughs> Some Illuminati stuff going on there. Sorry, guys. Um, Dennis Lebedev shooting the jab. And it looks like... He tries to catch it um, or, like, control the lead hand, but he doesn't really anticipate it being a jab, a real jab, uh, and then eats a body shot right there, you know, but not looking to counter again um, and not really controlling the space, right? A little bit of tapping the gloves, a little bit of probing from uh, Gassiev, but he's not controlling the space between him and Lebedev, and he's allowing those feints, those lead hands so far of Lebedev to allow him to set up those, those straight left hands. Um, and it's it's not looking good for for Gassiev at the moment. And this is really interesting because I um, I actually gave Lebedev the first two rounds of the fight uh, pretty handily. Beautiful right there from from Lebedev. So Gassiev does that same timing right, boom, and gets caught with the right hook. So he's gonna probe once and then commit to the next shot and step with it. And then Lebedev is able to time him with a touching little right hook right. But he's picking up on that timing and he's scoring, and that's gonna be very important. Um, especially with a fighter like Oleksandr Usyk, who is so smart. This guy is a brilliant fighter um, and picks up on patterns really well. And Denis Lebedev picked up on this one in the first 30 seconds of the fight. And again, it's also very common uh, to set your punches up like that with the probing lead hand against the southpaw. And I think that it's a look that Denis Lebedev has seen many, many times. And it's going to be a look that Usyk has seen many, many, many more. Now, interesting, okay, so now Gassiev probes, shoots the jab, and then blocks the counter, right? Very similar to what just happened, but it looks like he's baiting it now, but for some reason, he doesn't counter it, right? I wonder what's going on in his mind, why he's not like, oh, I know he's going to do this, why doesn't he set a trap for it, right? Why doesn't he make an opportunity to set up offense off of this pattern that he's he's established with Dennis Lebedev? Like, Dennis Lebedev established one with him, and now he's established one with, with Dennis Lebedev, but he's not he's not capitalizing on it, and that's going to be very important. And again, not controlling the space, right? Just allowing Dennis Lebedev to throw punches at him. I wonder why he's doing that, you know? There you go, goes back to controlling. Dennis Lebedev does a great job of seeing the first shot, parrying the second one, and then moving off the line and not allowing a third shot to come. Oh, this is not good for Gassiev right here. Lebedev comes in, probing jab, probing jab, takes lead foot dominance. Gassiev just shells up, right? Not defending him very, himself very well. Taking a step back, right? But to, you know, kind of break the line between him and his opponent, but not, not moving off the line, not controlling his opponent. Dennis Lebedev so far has been able to do everything that he wants to do against, against Gassiev. Uh, and Gassiev has no control over him. This is not going to bode well for him against a fighter like uh, Oleksandr Usyk. And again, committing to that straight left hand, right? And he moves off the line on that one. I, I still think it's very similar to the the Golovkin one, um, where he steps with it and kind of shifts forward. Um, but this time he has he does actually move off the line, which is great. But he's not 
He's not setting up his shots, and Lebedev is very easily getting away from them. Now, I know what a lot of people are thinking, and it's the same thing that um, someone said in the comments about Roy Jones Jr. being a 12-round fighter. Um, but it's very important that you um, that you know how to set your punches up, and that's what we're looking at. And so far, a minute and a half into the round one, Gassiev hasn't landed anything. You know, he's not defending himself super well. He's not controlling the space between him and his opponent. As you see, Lebedev has all the range and all the the space, the control of the space that he needs to set up his punches. He could he could even throw a straight left hand here, right? Boom, boom. And then and then Gassiev takes a step back, but he could still land that straight left hand. Now, I do know that Gassiev does wound up winning this fight. I do know that and kind of busts Lebedev up a little bit. Um, uh, I do think that it was a lot closer than maybe the, some of the scorecards said. I think it was a split decision. Someone even gave it to Lebedev. Um, but I actually haven't watched the last few rounds of the fight uh, because you learn so much more in the first few rounds than you do in the last few. But um, again, now Lebedev probing with the lead hand, getting him into the high guard, and kind of landing that one on the top of the head uh, because he knows, boom, he knows that Gassiev is not countering him. Now, this is going to be a huge problem for him against Usyk uh, because it, not only is he not controlling the space between him and Lebedev, but he's allowing Lebedev to do everything that he wants without having to worry about return fire. And uh, a, a smart and creative fighter like Oleksandr Usyk is really going to be able to take advantage of that. Ooh, he does land a shot there. Maybe he doesn't. I'm not sure. Let's see. So he steps to the inside with the lead hand, almost walks into the, the right hook counter. It does look like it touches Lebdi's chin. You can't really see it. Maybe we'll see it in between rounds. Um, but again, not really setting it up either. He's doing a good job of breaking his rhythm, though, which is great, um, and not throwing him on the same timing flash and then shoot in the next shot. Um, or actually, is it the same rhythm? Yeah, it does. actually does look like the same rhythm. Flash the lead hand, and then shoot the, the straight left, uh, or the straight right, rather. Um, and it's very similar to what he was doing earlier. Flash the, like a probing shot, and then shoot your real shot. And it looks like it's the same timing, the same, um, the same setup. And again, I don't think that that's gonna work super well against Usyk, who has so much more control over the space between him and his opponent. Mm. probing jab from from Lebedev and look at how much control uh, Lebedev has over over Gassiev probing with the lead hand probing with the lead hand and Gassiev doesn't look like he's even he even knows what to do with this probing lead hand again beautiful shot from Lebedev probing right and then he breaks the rhythm off of that probing so right here right where he goes Probing shot, probing shot, and he gets Gassiev accustomed to taking the shot here, taking the shot here. And then he moves into touching the lead hand right here, touching it right there, and then shooting it in between. And I think I missed the frame again. But again, making him think that they're going to touch gloves or touch his forearm, and then shooting that shot right in between the guard. Um, Dennis Lebedev showing that he knows what to do when he has control and knows what to do to take the control away from his opponent. <clears throat> Dennis Lebedev baiting the counter, trying to wait for the counter, but Gassiev is not countering him, so De Lebedev is having a little bit harder of a time landing his shots. I don't know if Lebedev is usually a counter puncher, but at the moment, neither of them are super active, but it's Lebedev's advantage. And again, Lebedev is the one with the with the control, right? He's the one fainting. He's the one making Gassiev react. And again... Gassiev has no way to set his punches up here. He flashes the lead hand, shoots the straight right hand, um, and is no closer to landing any of his shots. And that's going to be a huge problem for him when he fights um, Oleksandr. Again, same setup right there. Flash the lead hand. Lebedev's not no danger. Um, and this one is interesting because he doesn't really move off the line either. You know, his back feet, his back foot sweeps, but his head stays on his front leg, right? Um, boom. So when he shoots that shot, right, um, and this is one of the problems with this, with this style, um, and I'll talk about it just real quick, but he's, he's in this, in this stance, 
and he shoots his right hand, right? Now his hips can go uh, one of two ways, right? But he's allowing them to just move here, but he's keeping all his weight on his front leg, so he's not really moving off the line, right? He has to get his front leg off the line uh, because Dennis Lebedev is going to be able to catch him on the line. When he shoots that right hand, boom, he needs to, his hips can either go this way, right? Boom, or they can come back to where, he, where they are. And what he's doing is after he shoots the shot, he's staying where they are. His, his weight is all staying on his front leg, and that means that he's going to be a target against, um, uh, against Usyk because he's not really moving anywhere, right? And now uh, you might be saying that's kind of like uh, Floyd Mayweather's stance, right? He used to do that very clever thing when he, he fought, um, let's see, what was that boy's name? He beat the hell out of that boy. Um, Gotti, Arturo Gotti, right? And he would shoot that right hand. He would be like, boom, right? And then he would shift off to the side, but he would transfer his weight from the front leg after he transfers it, boom, and he would pull it back and shoot to the side, right? And what, what Gassiev is doing is he's shooting his hand, and then he's staying there, and he's just pivoting a little bit. But because of the fact that his opponent is a southpaw, he's staying basically right in front of him, and he doesn't really get off the line. Um, Dennis Lebedev moves off the line for him, right? But it's not going to be something that works out very well for him against Usyk, uh, who is going to be a master at these angles. Not a lot going on. And then that's the end of the round. Now we can kind of see if um, any of those shots. Ooh, Abel Sanchez. That's his trainer. See if any of those shots landed. You know what? It doesn't fucking matter. Pardon my language. It doesn't matter at all. Um, we've seen so far that he doesn't really know how to set his punches up. He doesn't know how to control the space. His head stays on the line. Um, a lot of not great things from him. Um, that make it so that although he might be a very good fighter, very tough, very rugged, he takes a beating in this fight too, I think, um, his inability to set his punches up, his in and he has an inability to defend himself with an active guard, right, moving around, and he doesn't move off the line very well. So, so far, he doesn't really check checkmark any of the boxes that are really important to being a great fighter. Oh, thank you, Dennis Lebedev. So, check this out. He shoots that right hand. Takes that step, but look at how his weight stays on his, his left leg. And Dennis Lebedev is easily able to get away from that shot because it's set up the same way, right? Yeah, he flashes the lead hand again. Let's just make sure. Flashes the lead hand again, shoots that straight right, and then Dennis Lebedev knows he's not going to move off the line and is able to control him right there and then piece him up and land that, that right hand or that straight left hand, um, and it might get blocked, it might, you know, it doesn't matter if it's blocked or not. The idea here is that Gassiev is open for these types of attacks, because his his attack so far is very basic, um, and it doesn't look like he knows how to set his shots up, he doesn't know how to, why isn't this thing playing? Uh, he doesn't know how to defend himself so far, um, even though he does wind up busting Lebedev up later, um, uh, you can see clearly why Lebedev, why this was such a close fight, and why Lebedev was given the the um, the win on one of the scorecards. Um, and it's interesting too because I wanted to make sure because I do think that Lebedev is actually a pretty decent fighter. Um, so it really surprised me that this guy was able to beat him. Uh, but after watching the first two rounds, I was just like, oh, that's really interesting, you know, um, that Gassiev could win this fight after having such a poor showing now again trying to shoot his jab right probing shoots that second jab uh gassiev uh interesting technique though he steps to the inside right boom when he shoots his jab this is going to be very important when he fights Usyk, and we'll see when we do tape on Usyk. um to be honest i'm probably just going to do tape on Usyk tomorrow um i don't think that there's a real reason to do like a huge breakdown on gassiev um, because he looks pretty limited, you know, he looks pretty limited, tough guy, right, but he looks pretty limited um, in his ability to fight southpaws, right, very similar to Jojo Diaz, who looks like, you know, the, the best thing since uh, sliced bread when he's fighting right-handed fighters, man, that guy looks like he can, he can fight, but once he fought Gary Russell, another southpaw, someone he's not comfortable fighting, he looked like probably the most average fighter I've ever seen, you know,
And uh, I could do more film study on that and watch more tape on it, but he just didn't have a lot to, sh to show, right? Like anyone who knows how to throw punches quickly um, and has power, right? They're going to look the same thing as, as Judge o Diaz did in that fight. No skill, no setups, no good defensive techniques, you know, not a lot going on there. But um, anyway, back to this fight. Um, same style, flash that lead hand, uh, commit with that right, that right hand, and then finds himself all his weight on his left leg right in front of Dennis Lebedee, who doesn't capitalize on it right there, but, but shows you again just how, um, just how easy it is to take advantage of it. Now, did he step with that jab? He does step with his jab. So Gassiev stepping with his jab more and more. That's going to be a huge problem against um, against Usyk. Even though Usyk has the same tell as well. Ooh. <laughs> um, again, Lebedev trying to time him off of that shot, right? Probing shot and then expecting the real shot. Lebedev picking up on it. Lebedev, very smart fighter. Um, kind of makes me sad that he didn't win this fight because watching him fight Usyk, man, that would have been a great fight probing and now look at look at these jabs that that uh levity was shooting notice why he's able to do this he doesn't have to faint he doesn't have to set them up he's not like he doesn't have the greatest uh active guard either right he's like a little bit you know ducking down right a little bit but for the most part he's just flashing that jab out there and that's because he knows that gassiev is not looking to counter him gassiev is only do trying to do one thing right now and that's lead and he's having a very hard time doing it again that lead hand comes out, and then what, is, what does Lebedev do? He says, oh, he's trying to set something up. So he punches him in the face and makes Gassiev reset. Again, Gassiev with the same, the same feint. He has no idea how Lebedev is going to react, um, and it doesn't land the shot. You know, Maybe it lands to the body. Let's see. Mm, it looks like it hits him on the elbow, and then it kind of strays low. Um, so blocked shot by Lebedev. But Lebedev doing a great job of controlling him, feinting. Fainting right there, getting Gassiev to reset. You know, Gassiev, you know, looking pretty normal right now. Oh, man, beautiful. What set that up? Let's see. So Gassiev on that same timing, right? Flashing the lead hand, then flying in and walking into that. We're going to look at in between rounds just to make sure the, the angle is kind of awkward. I'm not really seeing what I want to see. Um, let's see if he steps with it too. Yeah, and he steps to the inside of his opponent. Very dangerous. No counters, no, no layers to his defense. Um, and when Lebedev does feint and does probe it, it is easy for him to get Gassiev out of position. Again, flash the lead hand, commit to the jab, stepping to the inside fainting look at how the, well these feints work on gassiev too he's getting him to change position almost any time that he wants oh beautiful doesn't land the shot um but doing a great job again not setting his shots up and this time actually he doesn't even use the the telegraph where he faints first he just throws that right hand and notice how far away it is from landing you know, he's going to have a very tough time landing any shots against Usyk. Um, maybe I'll do one more round after this. I'll do a third round. Uh, kind of the same pace as this, as this one. I think Lebedev wins this one too. So maybe I, could, I should skip to like the fifth round or something. But Gassiev, again, not countering. He does not look into counter. He doesn't move off the line particularly well. He's not setting his punches up very well. To be honest, he kind of looks... He kind of looks tailor-made for Usyk. He actually looks tailor-made for Lebedev, too. Um, I do realize that um, uh, Gassiev, again, right, not moving off the line, flashing that shot, eats a body shot again, not countering. He's not defending himself super well. Um, and these two rounds are just a landslide. You know, I'm really going to have to look at what it was. Um, maybe I'll do some more rounds on this tomorrow, and we can further discuss how... Um, how Gassiev kind of turns it up. Maybe I'll skip the next round and I'll just end the video after this round. Again, so easy. Probing with the lead hand and then 
telegraphs it, and then Lebedev, beautiful work from Lebedev too, right? After he slips that shot, right? He slips it, and what does he do? Oh, is a right hook going to come? I don't know. Get my guard up, and then control his opponent's right arm and push off. Beautiful work. Look at the look on Gassiev's face, too. Oh, fuck. Look at... <laughs> nope. Not today. Hmm. Again, no countering. And that's two in a row for, for Lebedev. And two easy rounds. Beautiful work from Lebedev right there. Gassiev starts coming in. He slips the shot. Controls his arm, moves off the line. Beautiful. Why is a fight that Lebedev loses making me a fan of him, right? Maybe we will kind of just go into round three. I think round four is when um, when Gassiev starts winning. Um, so maybe I'll do round four, five, and six tomorrow and hope that something else happens. Again, the same timing, flash the lead hand, shoots that jab to the body, and almost gets caught with a right hook, you know. Um, he kind of ducks down, he falls inside a little bit, and that's partly because he's stepping to the inside of Lebedev with the jab, right? And he's not on the outside, so it messes Lebedev's timing up a little bit. Um, but So not a dirty shot by any means, I don't think. Controlling the space. There we go. Wait, why is my control not working? Probe, moves off the line with him. There we go. Not bad. When he shifts to this side, he gets um, Levity to change uh, change angles with him, and he kind of beats him to the he kind of beats him to the line and catches him transitioning um, to the new line that Gassiev is creating and winds up getting a free shot. There we go. How do he land that jab? Let's see. Okay, so he's picking up the speed a little bit. Interesting. So batting that lead hand down, batting that lead hand down, and then shooting the jab, rather than just touching his opponent's gloves, but batting it down and showing that he actually might know how to use lead hand control. You know, kind of defying everything that we saw in round one and two. I wonder if he'll start using these kind of tactics against, um, against Usyk, or if he'll kind of be a little slow with them too. <clears throat> let's see probing okay throwing some feints in there there you go probe probing with the right hand controlling the lead hand taking a step back and now he doesn't even just move move straight back anymore and just get in the high guard when Lebedev starts setting his shots up he controls the lead hand and takes a step back I wonder what Gassiev was doing in round one and two like what was was he like coming down from something, you know, like, what's his deal? You know, not the greatest right there, but at least when he shot that shot, he moved off the line the correct way. Correct direction. Very poor way to move off the line, though. Same kind of timing. No setup on that shot. Missed it wildly. No setup on that shot either. Counters him. Shoots that. Boom. Eats that counter. Again, he's not setting up his shots, and he's being very, very easy to time and very easy to, um, to figure out. I think he steps to the inside with this shot again. Yeah, he steps to the inside again. Um, that's going to be a big problem for him. Missing those shots, same basic setup technique. Getting controlled when he comes in right there. Great job from Lebedev, controlling the lead hand. Expecting that same timing right there. <laughs> Expecting a, a shot to come after that. There we go. Catch and counter style coming from Gassiev, the first time he's used it. Blocks that jab, Lebedev steps to the inside of his foot, and then Gassiev tries to counter. I don't think it lands. Let's see if it lands. No, it gets completely blocked. But Gassiev trying to make an adjustment and start to catch and counter. I wonder if that'll be something that he looks to do 
against Usyk, or if it's something that he continues to do in this fight. Again, not countering, not moving off the line. A little bit off the line as Lebedev moves off the line, but that doesn't count if you're following your opponent. There we go. There was some setup right there. So he flashes the lead hand, moves off the line, and then as Lebedev is moving on the line with him, throws a right hook. Not bad. Completely, again, completely whiffs his next attack, flashing the lead hand, telegraphing it, and then Lebedev being able to move off the line. Not controlling Lebedev, not catching countering there. Countering the jab right there, though, not bad. So I wonder if that's what he turns on in the later half of these rounds is counterpunching. Um, eats a shot right there. Now this is very important, you guys. This is probably, um, aside from the timing, right? Because the timing eventually, um, Gassiev will figure out that he's being timed, just like Canelo did against Golovkin, just like David Lemieux did against Golovkin. Um, you know, people just figure out that they're being timed. You know, Gary Russell um, or Jojo Diaz figured it out against um, uh, Gary Russell. And they make an adjustment, right? And you're not able to capitalize on that for the whole fight, but you're able to make them fight in a way that they're not used to fighting. Um, and that gives you more opportunities to land punches too. But this is really important that Levity didn't have to set this shot up at all. He just extends his glove and shoots a straight left hand because Gassiev doesn't have any head movement. Because he's not moving off the line. And when I talk about head movement, you guys, if your opponent throws a punch at you and you don't move, right, you're just an idiot, you know? If your opponent throws a punch at you, right, they throw a jab, boom, and you slip that shit. Wow, or they throw a right hand, right? Or they, they shoot a jab, boom, you slip. Slip a right hand, right? Or they throw the hook, right? Boom, you roll that shit. That's not defense, right? That's common sense, you guys. If you're not moving out of the way of punches, you're just a dummy. Okay? And as we see right here, what I'm talking about with that, with the active guard and stuff, you want to be moving, right? You want to be, boom, you know, use your lead hand, right? When you rock forward like this and you transition your weight from your right leg to your left leg, right? You step forward, right? You want to transition your weight a little bit, right? And then roll back, right? Boom. Take a step. Roll. Transition, you know? Don't just step forward, come forward like this, but you got to do it with some head movement, right? Make your opponent guess, right? And then that way when they shoot a jab, right, maybe you're like thinking, oh man, what, where am I going to go for the after party after I fuck this fool up? Boom, boom. And then that right hand comes, wah, and you just, you just missed it anyway, you know? They didn't even have a chance to land it because you got head movement. You're thinking about the after party and this guy's struggling to find your head. Anyway, Lebedev doesn't have any of those problems right here because Gassiev is not moving his head at all. He's just sitting on the line and eating shots. And that's going to be a very big problem for someone um, fighting Usyk. Usyk is so crafty, so crafty with his left hand style, right? You slip in this way, boom, boom, right? And off of these kind of movements, right? You're looking at your opponent, and you're like, oh, oh, shift, right? Oh, look this way, right? And then you slip this way, and as you come back, boom, you snap a right hand out there, boom, boom, shoot a left hand, right? You come this way, and you dip this way, right? Same motion as a left hand, boom, bam. Right? And you like set up a whole combo off that. And you start messing your opponent up based off of that head movement. And Usyk is very good at hiding his punches. Very good. And Dennis Lebedev didn't even have to hide this one. He actually telegraphs it by doing that same thing, ducking down and exploding out of his guard off of his back leg. Anyway. And then, <laughs> you know how you know that it got to somebody? When they immediately try to do the same thing to you. It's something that I like about uh, watching Andre Ward. Andre Ward does that. Um, Crawford does it. Who's another guy that does that? Spence does it. Um, there was another guy, man, that you just watch them and they're just like, oh, yeah, you think you got me? I'll get you back. I'll get you back. But that stuff always kills me when I see fighters do that. But again, Lebedee, not winning this what not winning this round either. Doing a good job right there. Levity tries to control the lead hand and let and uh Gassiev tries to counter him, right? And takes advantage of that. Oh man, beautiful. 
shoots that shot. Lebedev commits to a straight right hand, not setting it up. It's not even on catch and counter timing, right? With catch and counter timing, you want to be like kind of in your high guard, blocking stuff. And then as soon as something touches your glove, right, boom, swing that shot, you know? If it touches your left glove, you throw the left hand. If it touches your right glove, you throw your right hand. And you just want to throw shots off of those timings. Um, but kind of gets pieced up. And what happens when he, when he gets pieced up right there? Beautiful, too. Whoops, we went a little too far back. Boom. And then Lebedev controls him and moves off the line. Lebedev looking like an A fighter, man. Lebedev looking real good. I guess we'll find out tomorrow when I do rounds four, five, and six. I think those were sweeps for Gassiev as well. Um, I think I looked at the boxing score, the boxing scene. I looked at their scorecard. And for the most part, I think they have some pretty good scorecards. They're not like super biased. They don't really care either. Um, so I kind of trusted their their um, really close scorecard. I think they gave it to Gassiev by one point. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we think tomorrow. I'll do I'll do rounds four, five, and six of of Lebedev, um, Gas of Gassiev. Yeah, on that same timing, um, and Lebedev. Man, it's interesting too because Lebedev is so much smaller than this dude. Um, but anyway, um, so far interesting fight. Um, I I know it sounds like I'm a Gassiev hater, right? All this bullshit, whatever. You know, um, it's the same thing that I say about Errol Spence. You know, when I see when I see flaws, I just that's what you focus on, right? You you look at all of those flaws, especially when you're fighting such a high caliber fighter and Usyk, who does so many things right. Um, that that's just where you got to start. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know if you guys are excited for this fight. I'm gonna be doing this fight breakdown. Uh, and keys to victory all week. I'm going to try to get a video out every day. So let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, and subscribe. And um, yeah, thanks guys.